In this video, let's talk about what's new with the Vive Mars cam track. All right, I'm here with Ray from Vive Mars. Ray, good to see you again. Hey, good to see you again. Yeah, another uh, NAB. Another NAB. Yeah. So uh, for people not familiar, let's just get an overview of uh, what is the Vive Mars. Yeah, tracker. absolutely. So we're Vive Mars. We're a subsidiary of HTC Vive. You know, traditionally we're a virtual reality company and a lot of the DNA of what we're doing with Vive Mars comes from our VR business. We built a professional class camera tracking solution a couple years ago. Last year when you visited us, we announced our lens encoders and we we're kind of working to make a very accessible but powerful camera tracking solution for any sort Sort of video creator, be it from the indie side all the way up to large studios. Yeah. Nice. And what is, we're going to review what's in the kit, what's in the, uh, the Vive Mars Cam Absol setup. Absolutely. So at its core, the Mars Cam Track Solution or patented Vive Tracker 3.0s with the Rover Box. We actually have a core brain unit. That's where you kind of control all the data associated with the camera tracking, as well as utilizing our Base Station 2.0s that create the tracking volume itself. And then additionally, we have our FizzTrack lens encoders. It's really the missing piece that we announced last mm -hmm. year to allow you to take all this incredible lens, lens data that you have from your, from your cameras to push it back into engines so you get that information also reflected in your scenes. And now the fish trackers are out in the wild, available, people can use them. That's correct, that's correct. And since last year, we've had, you know, kind of an overwhelming success with them. People really said that this is the missing piece. You know, previously, a lot of our users were just using the prime lenses to, mm. to, to do their productions, but now we allow them to use full, full zoom lenses and allow them to really control that, that barrel data and push it back into engine. And actually, one of the kind of the fun announcements that we have here for NAB 2024 there's actually a motor that was inside the Fizz track last year. The whole that time. We, we, that we, the whole time, yeah. That we didn't have turned on, but we turned it on this year. We allow you to power it, and using actually small rig remote, you can actually drive the your focus and, and lens pulls remotely as opposed to having being on top of the camera that's awesome and so if you have the, the uh, small rig remote it's you can control your fish trackers that's right awesome uh, and what else do we have new uh here updates with the vibe mars yeah absolutely you know we love to engage with our, our community we love to kind of hear what are the pain points that our users are having and so we have some great quality of life uh updates this year around uh, mars cam track one of the big things is that we now have a uh web portal that you can uh, dial in from any any web browser to actually see the Mars output on the box itself from anywhere. So before that screen might have been, the, the Mars might have been somewhere else. Far exactly. Away from you know, now. We, Do you have any, any device, any tablet, phone? Any web browser. Like, uh, it's you literally just dial into the IP address and you're able to see it. You're able to see the health of the base stations, your IP address, you're able to recenter, be able to reset, whatever you need to do. And like, like, like you said, we found a lot of teams would end up putting the Mars kit, you know, maybe somewhere backstage and then they're in the front stage and they're trying to check the base station health. Uh, and you know, having to either see, call someone or do a Zoom call to see it in real time. And so this really allows you to, uh, to not have to worry about that and makes that a little more accessible. Additionally, you know, we have a lot of folks who are always trying to determine the health of the base stations themselves, as well as kind of the, the position of the trackers in real time. And so we've actually, re we're releasing a telemetry tool that will allow you to actually see the base stations and the and the, the trackers in real time gives gives you kind of a, a visual output of that as well as the signal strength of those so you can understand how strong each base station that you're using is actually covering the tracker itself as part of that uh, also so you can kind of see like if you need to sh shift your positioning of the base stations exactly. to get a better signal yeah exactly okay. and, and it, it's really helpful because you know we, we need a lot of teams who will see one base station will get a clue or something like that but they won't necessarily know which one it is and so this will give you an idea of you know, maybe you have a base station that ends up being a little too far away. Mm. Maybe you have a base station that's actually facing, you know, a, a, you know, the wrong direction or something like that. And so this tool will help you do that. That's very cool. I'm what's the normal, sorry, what's the oh. normal coverage area base station can track? Yeah, absolutely. So four base stations will support a 10 meter by 10 meter cube. Uh, and so that, that is, but we found that, you know, because the nature of props and, you know, set mm. elements, you know, that cube can be skewed in some very unique For shapes. Sure. And I've uh, seen some demos where it's been on some larger volumes, some larger sets. Here's like the Kardashian uh, sure. photo spot. So that was a, that was a big stage, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think I know that there's a little a little extra play that you get. Yeah. I've I've heard kind of differing numbers. I believe it's about. 
14 meters total from point to point. The throw of the base is actually quite large. So as a result, the strength of our tracking allows you to really, as long as you have at least two base stations seeing seeing your tracker, yeah. you're able to maintain tracking. And the new app will help you determine Absolutely. how to straight this. Uh, another feature mm -hmm. of that app is that we're actually including a take recorder. So say you're doing a, a bunch of camera moves, you're not necessarily doing this in real time, you're, not, you're just like filming different sort of camera moves. You're gonna be able to actually record and export those movements uh, as an FBX file. So maybe you're using that and you wanna kind of do, you know, track other objects uh, in your virtual scene. Maybe you have a plane doing, that uh, needs to uh, fly through. Compositing or, later, but you want the camera data exactly, right now. Exactly, exactly. Or potentially you know you get a really great take but the last piece of it is wrong you're able to be able to go in and kind of adjust that you yeah, know in, yeah. in something like Unreal Engine. And uh, those, do you get all the data as well like not just the tracker but the uh, the lens data? Where yeah yeah of, of course of yeah. course yeah. So one of the things about the uh, the, the rovers the rover recenters to the very center, it's middle middle of, of the rover. And we've had some teams ask, they'd really like to be able to use the different edges of the rover as a, as a center point instead. And so now we're gonna be allowing you to do that as well. Awesome. And how is, uh, what are the kit options? How is this sold? Yeah, so, so you know, we, we still have our kind of traditional core $5,000 uh, Mars kits. But one of the fun things that we're announcing here at NAB 2024 is actually for our reseller network, we're gonna be releasing a studio kit. And so, you know, we've had a lot of teams wanting a Pelican case. We've had a lot of teams that don't wanna to have to necessarily buy all the bits and, you know, the extra base stations and all that. They want the one kit, one, you know, one purchase. And so with the Mars Studio Kit, it comes in a Pelican case. It includes the two extra base stations that most of our users end up buying, okay. and then the extra tracker that most of our users buy, and includes two Fizz tracks as well. So this is a right. full kit for everything you need with one purchase. That's awesome. So with uh, just sort of the Vive Mars in general, it's sort of been making virtual production a bit more accessible. What have you kind of, what projects, what have you seen in this trend of like just smaller productions being able to do virtual production? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's interesting because the industry as a whole is realizing that uh, these small to medium studios are really kind of the, the most desirable and cost-effective uh, venues for virtual production. So we're finding that our, our footprint, our 10 meter by 10 meter footprint, fits really perfect in a lot of these kind of 30 to 50 foot walls uh, and a lot of the smaller spaces. You know, we also pride ourselves that not everyone is using LED LED panels. We have a lot of teams that use green screens. And a lot of times actually, you know, especially because with Mars, you can track up the three devices. Green screen is really great because you're able to run two cameras at once without having to worry about running multiple uh, frustums on, on, you know, uh, on, on, on different frequencies. Additionally, you know, like we're, we're really excited. We're, ex we're excited that uh, we're finding some very interesting other use cases for Mars. We're having some teams that are actually doing everything fully in engine and you see using like, you know, uh, our Mars tracker attached to say a camera to control a virtual camera and, you know, filming virtual characters in virtual environments. Like they're making a 3D animated film or something, but exactly. using that to control like a virtual yeah, camera in, the, in Unreal or something. Yeah, if you actually go back and you look at uh, 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 a GDC just a few weeks ago, an yeah. epic State of the Union uh, State of the Union presentation, you can actually see Mars being used uh, on stage as they uh, are uh, showcasing some very interesting camera moves as it relates to this, uh, the new uh, Marvel game that's, that's coming awesome. out as well. That's awesome. Uh, last one, what are you most excited about in virtual production in the next year or two? Oh, for me, you know, I just think it's like, I'm so excited where we are positioned in this industry to really get Mars injected into a lot of education institutions mm -hmm. to really allow kind of this next generation of filmmaker to get a chance to experience virtual production because the fundamental skills that they're learning using Mars will, uh, will allow them to be able to do anything they want in the virtual uh, the virtual production industry and also allow a lot of them to create their own studio. Yeah, this is why. Awesome. Thanks so yeah. much, Ray. Of course. Appreciate Thanks. It. Thank you. And that is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.